Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be turning this into this. Let's get right into it. The first part I wanted to work on in the interior was the engine. And it's molded in two halves, each of which I cut out of the sprue and clean with a hobby knife and some sandpaper. After which I glue the two pieces together with Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Some people like to use Mr. Hobby's uh, Mr. Cement S, but these two are pretty much the same product, it doesn't really matter. I then glue some of the smaller parts of the engine onto the main part for easier painting. Now what I would recommend every airplane modeler do is just quickly drill out a small hole in the exhaust pipe. Because most manufacturers don't put a little hole there and the modification takes like 30 seconds at most, but it adds so much more to the overall finished model. And in the end, it's often little things like this that could separate a good build from a great build. So keep that in mind. I started off with base coating everything with Tamiya Gloss Black because well, gloss black is the best base coat for any metallic paint. And I don't know if this is true, but don't like people who make mirrors also use gloss black paint for like making mirrors. I don't know. It's, I, yeah. Then I painted everything with AK Extreme Metal because they are some of the best metallic paints on the market. Uh, you could argue that Mr. Hobby's metallic paints are also pretty good, but they're simply not available as easily where I live. So uh, I stick to these. Now these are enamel based paints, which means you will have to seal them before we do any enamel based weathering. And I really like them. I mean, just, just look at the result just look at how smooth the metallic surface is how how small those metallic flakes are and while i was at it i also painted the ammo belt containers both the ammunition box and the um, recycling belt container and while the paint is drying let's put the low edge decals inside the cockpit and whoa that's a lot of stuff Right now though, I only need two pieces, and I put them on like any ordinary decal. I wet them in some warm tap water, I wet the surface a bit, and slowly transfer them onto the uh, cockpit side. This is actually a very interesting detail, because although the plane was painted red, most of the surface area of it was fabric. So even if it is painted red on the outside, it is still the original factory four color lozenge on the inside. And then I use these two uh, decal setting solutions from Mr. Hobby for some decal setter and then decal softer to make sure the decal traces the texture of the part. Two hours later. And look at that decal perfectly traced the texture of the parts. Right after that, I seal them with some flat varnish just to unify them with the surface and because there's literally nothing worse than shiny decals on a flat surface. And then a quick test fit showed me that, unlike according to the instructions, you can very clearly see the gray plastic behind the seat. So I had to backtrack a bit and paint a little piece of, well, plastic, but it was supposed to be fabric and some uh, Tamiya buff. And then put another little part of a low sense decal on there, which was a lot more fiddly than it should have been. Then I started gluing all the little pieces of the cockpit together. I didn't paint these smaller pieces first just because it would be a lot easier to glue them on first and to have them secure to something than to fiddle around with them in your hands and paint them. 
Speaking of which, I started painting all the details on the engine first with some black Vallejo paint. I used a very fine brush for this just because I didn't want to repaint the uh, silver color on it. That would be very counterproductive. And I also base coated all of the parts that were going to be either rusty or brass just to add some shadows in those places. Then I used a mixture of neutral gray and cold white to mix the uh, gray metal color they used in Fokkers. And for this I used two drops of the gray, one drop of white, one drop of drying retarder, and then a drop of tap water. And then I painted the um, deck that the engine sort of sits on. Then I started painting the exhaust, and I started off with a silver color that is just dry brushed on the pipes, kind of dry wet brushed, making sure that a large portion of it was metallic. After which I took a light rust color, yes, I know it's a model error, I do not have any more rust acrylic colors at the moment, and I dry brushed this in a lesser amount over all of the surfaces, still making sure that the metallic paint uh, can see through. Then I took an even lighter color of rust, orange rust, and I dry brushed it even less than the previous color, which just adds some more orangish highlights. Always making sure that I can still see the metallic paint underneath. Then I took some brown rust pigments from Optilung 502 and I lightly stippled them onto the whole pipe pretty much, which just adds a little more texture to the overall finish. And that's it. That's how I do my exhaust. Dare I say, it doesn't look too bad. The brass parts, I just, again, dry, wet brushed some me a gold leaf because I don't have any gold acrylics at the moment and then I dry brushed some light rust over it just to make the parts a little more brassier <laughs> yeah I don't know most of it will be hidden anyway so it doesn't matter then I used the same gray Fokker steel color to paint the inside struts of the fuselage and then I used a black color to paint all the details in the cockpit. So that would be these cables or tubes of some sort on the floor, the rudder pedals, the control joystick, compass, and so on. Then I used a saddle brown color to pick out some of the details on that control yoke. And then I finally assembled the control panel, which looks very, very rudimentary to our standards. But this was pretty advanced for the time. It was very fiddly because there was a lot of tiny photo etch levers that I had to put into tiny holes. So here's just me trying to get the engine startup switch in place. And now we can finally start putting everything together. And yeah, I know that engine looks absolutely huge compared to the uh, cockpit. And let's just take the time to appreciate all the work we've done before we seal it all up, never to be seen again. Because <laughs> yeah, that's what modeling is. You spend an absurd amount of time detailing something and then you just hide it away and then no one is ever going to see it except that you know it's there you put that work in and that gives me peace at night as you can see i'm holding the parts together with some tape while bit by bit i glue them together with some extra thin cement then I secure the cemented part with some more tape to secure it while it's drying, and I move on to the next section. Pretty straightforward. And as you can see, 
it all fits very well except for this one or two gaps right here between the engine and the seat so body to the rescue so one thing that's very good to do when dealing with straight gaps like this is to actually put two pieces of masking tape alongside it so the seam line is left in the middle then cover it with putty making sure to get it everywhere where the seam is and then when we take the masking tape off we get a nice straight and clean line that's a lot easier to sand when the putty is dry and i do the same thing on the rest of the surfaces where there are seam lines and then once the putty is dry i come in with a sanding sponge and some sandpaper to sand everything down and as you can see the result has a little dip in the plastic over here near the tail which means that we'll have to fill it and resand it again and then once everything is smooth i attach the lower wings to the lower part of the fuselage with some tamiya extra thin cement and i also glue in the uh, stitch on the bottom of the aircraft then I move on to building the tail section of the aircraft so here is the rudder and then I also secure the elevators the landing gear supports also need to be built up before painting so I just quickly glue them together and they need to have a bunch of photo etched parts placed on them and the kit provides us with this lovely template which I secured with some masking tape and cut out this little piece of photo etch, bent it into shape, and glued it onto the surface with some super glue. And then you repeat the whole process 11 times. So here's the result. Pretty good. Uh, I also glued the actual struts on it before painting and some other details on the rear of the aircraft including these little control surface pylons, the struts holding up the elevators, and the tail dragger. So here is the result and it's all ready for painting which the next episode will be all about. So this is an ongoing series where I build and paint up the Fokker D7 from Edward in 148 scale and if you haven't seen the previous video in the series click the link down below in the description and leave a like if you enjoyed the video, leave a dislike if you didn't, but let me know in the comments why you disliked the video so maybe I can improve on that. And of course consider subscribing if you want to see me paint up this plane and see the finished result. That is it for today my friends, I will see you all later. Peace.